Today, we talk to Roland, who shows us his folding catamaran dinghy, the Aquanaut. Man, I got a big dinghy. All I ever do is smile. Lord, I got a big dinghy. All I ever do is smile. Man who's got a big dinghy can go the extra mile. You know what I'm talking about. My name is Roland, Roland Hersink, and uh, we spent about four to six months uh, per year on a sailing vessel. We have a 40 foot sailboat and uh, we basically cruise up and down the coast and Florida and Bahamas with uh, Turks and Caicos, maybe Dominican on the schedule for next year. Cool. So uh, you're a voyager then? I guess you could call me a, a wannabe voyager or an almost voyager, yes sir. <laughs> <laughs> you have a very interesting dinghy. Let's start out with how people can find information about it. Well, well the first, my camera here. So yeah, I'm the first thing that. is that we got a website right here, Aquanaut Boats. So this is the Aquanaut and uh, aquanautboats.com is our website. That'd be the best place to get more information. It's got pictures, it's soon to have some videos and links, uh, prices, specifications, etc. everything they need to know. Well, you've got the most unique dinghy that we've filmed. Well, second most, but that was a homemade, very weird thing. <laughs> Why don't you uh, tell us all about this uh, dinghy? Okay, um, well, first of all, uh, let me give you a little background, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I used to own, uh, when we got into sailing about six or seven years ago, I had a sailboat, I didn't want to re destroy the lines of the boat with an arch and all the luggage on the back. So I wanted to find a, a, a dinghy that we could use and take with us that was transportable, uh, as well as being stable and dry. So we ended up with a porta boat. We used that for a number of years. Uh, the other, it worked fine. It had two slight distractions. One is the bow is very low, so you can get swamped quite easily. Um, uh, the second is uh, I wanted to use an electric motor as I'm using here. And the Torquedo uh, will take us about a mile, a mile and a half at any decent speed in the port boat. For me, that was uh, not good. So it wasn't good enough. I, I, the, if it's a good boat, maybe, but it wasn't a good boat for me. And electric being the wave of the future, I want to be part of the clean movement. And uh, sailors, of course, we're not burning our fuel anyway. So the electric motor fits in really well. Uh, on that basis, I wanted to redesign a boat for myself. I tried a, a catamaran dinghy, an inflatable. Uh, I've owned one of those for a few years. Uh, that works okay, a little bit better than the port boat, but you're still pushing water with an electric motor. And if we're gonna go any distance with an electric motor, we can't, we're not gonna be planing anyway with an electric, so we need to be able to slice through the water. And that's where I came up with this design here. The, when I designed it, I wanted a design for stability uh, on the water and uh, keeping people dry. So, you know, when you have an inflatable, you're sitting on the side of the boat, any kind of wave, the butt, you're gonna get wet butt. Uh, you see ladies are all dressed up in their raincoats, etc. It's really no way to go through the water. <laughs> it's, it's nice, but it's, uh, it's not the best way. So uh, the first thing I want is stability, a stable and dry boat. This boat here, natural seating position, very stable. I can sit in any one of these seats. Four people can have their own seat. Uh, I can lay down on the bench. Uh, I take the bench out, take it to the beach, uh, lay on it and not get in the sand, whatever I might want to do. So very stable and very dry. And so that meets the first requirement. The second requirement, was that it's gonna be good with electric. So because of the hull shape, we're not planing, we're like a pair of skates going through the water. It's very easy to push through the water. And you saw me rowing, very easy to row, goes very straight. So with an electric, this is a 1000 watt motor. And if, I've got, if I use 300 watts and have four people in the boat, I'm going three and a half knots. That is unheard of, that's completely unheard of. What's your range when you do that? Uh, I can do five, I can, at that speed, I can do about four or five knots range, nautical, oh, nautical miles. Nautical miles. Four or five nautical miles over okay. an hour, yeah. And so I've got an extra battery. I usually carry two batteries, so I can do almost 10 miles on my boat. Okay. At three and a half knots. Yeah, I, with, I, uh, whether I have motoring with the electric, and you're like twice as fast as a porta boat with the same motor. Yeah, I used to have this on my porta boat, and uh, I was in Key West, which is one of my motivating factors. Key West, the mooring field, is about a mile, over a mile from the dock. And to take this motor with my porta boat or with any kind of inflatable dinghy to the dock, I get to the dock and I'm almost out of juice. And now I can go uh, across the bay in Georgetown, I can go to Key West dock and back uh, four trips before I'm out of juice. Yeah, I think you have the boat here that makes this little electric motor actually practical. Uh, exactly right. Mm -hmm. So that's the second uh, feature of the boat. The third is versatile. You know, I've got folding bicycles I need to carry, I've got laundry, I've got groceries, I've got guests with suitcases. 
Uh, you know, sometimes we're going to go fishing, sometimes we're going to go swimming, sometimes we're just going to lay at the beach. This thing will do it all. Uh, I really like the, the fact that you can fish this way from the center bench. Two people get their own hull, their own gear. I like that you can put your bikes and the laundry in, it's going to stay dry. I like that when I get to the beach, I can just take this out, unsnap it from the back, lay it on the beach and lay on it so I don't have to lay in the sand. Uh, I think my wife likes this. She can just lay down on the boat while we're like just floating around. So it's, I'm six foot nine, so I make the bench look a little small, but from a normal person, plenty of room to lay down. Versatile, that's my third uh, favorite thing. But of course, you've got to transport a boat. If I'm on a sailboat, uh, the reason I chose a port boat was so that I could tie it to the rail of my sailboat, fold it flat and tie it to the rail. So uh, in this boat, I can undo the bolts, pull the hull off, make it flat, throw the materials, the seats, the beams, everything in the hull, close the hull with a little snap, close the other hull, tie them both against the rail, one next to the other. So it takes no more room than a port boat or a paddleboard. Now, I'm a lazy sailor. Uh, if you're a sailor at all, like me, lazy is one of the key words to, in your vocabulary. So I don't like to do work I don't like to do. So when, when it's assembled, I don't want to go up on a four deck and disassemble it, make it flat just for a little transit. So I want to be able to tow it. This boat, because it's like a pair of skates with the, both hulls acting like a rudder, I can tow this boat and it's not going to waver around. It's going to cut through the chop. It's going to tow very, very easily and very safely and stably. So if I don't have an arch and I don't want to fold it up, I can just tow it. Of course, when I'm going across big water to Gulf Stream or, you know, I'm going to sail for two days, three nights, I'm going to fold it up and put it on. However, being a lazy sailor that I am, I got tired of folding up the port boat as well. On my foredeck, I eventually got some money and I bought an arch and put an arch on the back of my boat. So I've, I can use, I can fasten the, the tow lines to the rings, hoist it up on the back of my arch, carry it that way just like any other dinghy. Best of all, when it's, transportability is important, but also when we get to shore, we're going to store our boat on the hard for three to six months while we're away and during the hurricane season. A normal dinghy, you end up leaving outside. Tropical storm comes, it's gonna blow away. The sun's gonna beat on it for a whole six months in Florida. It's not, not really a good way. So what we do with our boat is we take this down, fold it flat, put it in the rental car, take it to the storage unit, in the elevator, up into the storage unit. And we have a seven and a half by 10 foot storage unit. This boat, 11 and a half feet long, fits perfectly in that unit. So I can put it away, out of the way when I'm done with it. Likewise, if, you, if you're gonna take it home, you don't, have a, you don't need a slip, you don't need a trailer, you can just hang it because of, it's got handles here. We can just use the handles and hang it like a rake or a bicycle on the wall of your garage. So it's out of the way for the season. That's a, the, 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 the fourth thing I like. And the last thing I like is that um, it's very durable. This material, probably bulletproof, we haven't shot at it, but we've rammed this thing into the dock. The bow comes up, snaps right back out. No damage done. I can drive onto the beach, onto the rocks, onto the coral. No issues. I might get a little scratch, but I'm never going to sink the boat or cause a leakage. I come up to the dock, there's a nail sticking out or a sharp thing sticking out. No problem. I tell my wife my middle name is Careful. She laughs about that. That's absolutely not true. So a boat like this, for me, is a necessity. A rubber dinghy, if I want to call it that, or an inflatable, is rapidly going to become a deflatable with me at the helm driving onto the beach and up against the dock. So it's very nice to have something that's very solid. This is ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. If I'm buying an inflatable, I might get a life expectancy of eight to 10 years, depending on how I treat it and where I store it. Uh, and of course, it's gonna come with maybe a two year warranty. This thing here, because of the construction, it's got a 15 year warranty, but it's a 20 year investment. So it's something that when I spend my money on, I'm gonna pay a little more upfront, but it's gonna last so much longer. And it puts me in a position to use the technology of the future, the electric motor. Those five things, I'm sold. Cool. You had mentioned that this version is not ready for sale yet. What are you going to be improving? What's, what's the, the new one going to have? What's in your brain right now? Uh, well, we've got a lot of things in the brain. You know, I want to add a sailing rig because it goes through the water so easily. I've got a, a great uh, transom, a whole piece right here, a beam where I can oh, pop yeah. in a, a rig and tie it up with a, a, a few lines to the side and put a sail on it and off I go. So I think that's an addition. Some people who are more fair weather than I say they want to have a, a bimini. But you know, those are add-ons. What we really need to do with this boat, and the reason I'm not selling it yet is because it's not perfect to my standard. As I mentioned, I'm an engineer and want it to be just right. Once those things are fixed, it's Kickstarter time or launch time and the boat will be for sale. Cool, well thank you very, very much. Cool.
if I wanted to have an electric, this is the boat I would have it on. Yeah. You know what? Uh, what I want. One thing I want to add. So I take this boat out. It's a chick magnet. <laughs> now, that, that sounds really stupid. You know, I'm an old guy. I'm not oh. a chick magnet. But when I show it to people, it's almost inevitably the woman that really likes this boat. I really like it. And then I ask them, why do you like it? And they can't really verbalize it, but I think it's because it it looks more stable and they don't have to sit on the edge of the rubber and get a wet butt and i think that's what it is but you know it's a real chick magnet it's uh, it's cool what do you think emily i i really liked it i thought that uh just watching elizabeth sit on the seat and you know she's not bumping you know along as she's riding in it she's just sort of gliding like the queen yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah sure. i think somebody told me it reminds uh reminds them of a uh, gondola a venetian gondola yeah. And that's very romantic. And so the women have this in their mind. They see this, it's like, oh, my man's going to be at the back, kind of driving me through the harbor. <laughs> yeah. It was very easy to get in and out of, too. It felt very stable and like very much like a gondola, just yeah. kind of straight. I think it's got a great future. You know, we got to make some fine tweaks. And then, uh, of course, a good invention is never enough. You need to do marketing. So I, I run, I'm an entrepreneur as well. And I know very well that you can invent the best thing ever. And if you don't protect your rights and if you don't bring it to market in the right way, it's still nothing. So our, I think we got the best thing ever boat wise. Next thing we need to do is make sure we get a good marketing team behind it and get it sold. Pretty cool. Thanks for your time today. All right, thank you. Bye. Bye bye. It's like canoeing without having to paddle. Yeah, that's right. Actually, these are oars for rowing, but if you had regular canoe paddles, you could have four people just paddling this thing as well.